Starting a new business is an exciting journey, but it also comes with its fair share of risks. Business insurance safeguards your hard work by protecting your assets. Without it, a substantial liability claim could put your personal finances at risk. Liability insurance also gives you a competitive edge in the market. Visit Zensurance forward slash save 35 to get a free quote for the low cost insurance protection you need so you can focus on your growing business. Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hi, this is Angela Faye from Canada's podcast. Today, we are inspiring imaginations that will change the world. Well, that's Ken Merkel's purpose, and he is the founder of Unlimit and Sci-Fi Hive. It's a coaching and consulting agency that inspires organizations to create a collaborative vision for their future and guide them to execute on realizing those visions. So in today's podcast, we're going to be talking first about what is exponential growth? Why now more than ever do we need to reimagine and rally together to create a compelling future? We're going to talk to Ken about his story, what brought him here to where he is today, and we're going to do a little bit of a dive into what is the sprint process, what is the experience, what makes it unique, what results you can expect, maybe even we'll touch on some case studies, and then we're going to talk about a project that we're working on and how to get involved if you share the same vision and want to contribute. And as a little teaser, it's an urban food security project. So there's your little teaser for today. I want to jump in and welcome Ken Merkel to Canada's podcast. Ken, welcome. Hi, Angela. Thank you. Let's, um, before we jump into you, can you give me a little taster on your sort of definition and what is exponential growth? So, so I think for me, it's really about, um, you know, technology is growing faster than ever. And along with that, we have societal change and, um, you know, many, many global challenges. And for me, I really kind of take that, that human view of that in that, um, that kind of change is very difficult for humans. Um, for, you know, we kind of are linear in the way we think. Right, and so, so that that's really the kind of the look that I see, I see with this is, you know, there is exponential change that's happening. You know, there's nothing we can do about that, and and uh, there's so much happening at once that yeah, as humans we're having a little bit of trouble of rethinking what that future could be, right, and um, and getting out of our linear box and starting to think exponential. And I, I think you know we need to take a very positive view of that future. And that's really what I try to promote is a utopian future, um, which is a lot harder for us to do than to think dystopian because, you know, a lot of our so movies true. and stuff have trained us to do that. Right. So it's so true. And, yeah. and full confession that Ken and I are both part of the open EXO community of change makers, right? We're transforming civilization to a better future. Um, and one thing that has always struck me about Ken is, you know, that that, that dystopian talk about disruption and you know if you don't do this you're going to be dead your company is going to be dead and and uh, you know you always put a positive spin and lens on well hang on we, you know we're not going to die we just need to adapt and align and think differently and and things like that so why do you think now more than ever we need to sort of put that optimist lens on and reimagine and rally together to create a compelling future well because I, I think that Technology exists for us to really change our future. Um, and the only thing holding us back is ourselves um, and our resistance to change and, and things like that, which has worked for, you know, generations and generations for a long time to keep us safe. But now to keep us safe, we have to really start rethinking how we live. Uh, you know, we're, we're not worried about getting eaten by lions so much anymore. So now we have to really maybe start taking some more risk. Um, Although I don't see it as risk if you're using a sprint kind of platform because you're doing an iterative approach that reduces that risk, right? So uh, for me, it is really about starting to shift our our human thinking and, and that's built into our genetics. And so we have to look at different ways of doing that to take advantage of the technology to deal with some of the big problems that we have because 
we do have a time limit on some of these major problems like climate and, and we have some food, you know, supply issues and things like that. So we've got to start working now, taking advantage of the tech that, that's available to us, uh, but in different ways than we've ever thought of before. And I think it kind of an underlying essence of what you're saying, too, is, is taking a proactive approach to creating our future as opposed to reacting to what externally has yeah. been kind of dictated to us on, on you know, what our lives and what our livelihoods look like. Yeah, it's really um, about thinking, what, what do we want our future to be? And yes. then work backwards from there, right? And and make create that vision of where we want to be. And then we can figure out how to get there after that, right? But awesome. we have to really kind of define that first. And so let's just talk a little bit about you. We're gonna we're gonna dive into the sprint process in a little bit more detail. What is it? And and then the example of the sci-fi sprint process experience. But let's talk about you for a little bit. So what where have you come from? You know, what 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 has guided your thinking and and from today and then you know what what makes you so positive and why are you in this space of of helping organizations and people transform yeah it's a, actually um so i've been in the it world for many many years um but i've also kind of on the side i've been you know working on human behavior and and many years ago i started working with uh with a, an author who wrote a book called primal management and uh it's really about the chemistry of humans and how our brains mm -hmm. work and um, and there's you know a few aspects of of the way our brains work that we you know we we like to belong to a community we like to innovate actually although we're resistant to change and we like to you know really excel at building skills and things like that um, and that's all driven by our our chemistry of our brain and uh, you know so things that make us happy they kick off some endorphins and then we get really excited about it and so. Uh, I've been leading big teams, large teams for a very long time and during very massive transformational organizational change. And so I, I really practiced kind of different organizational models and different ways of engaging staff and getting them to believe in a new future. And and uh, I started actually playing with with the idea of, of Sci-Fi Hive with a large IT group that I had. And doing them in person. This was obviously pre-COVID, quite a few years ago, and the and it was in the education space. And they came up with some great ideas. And then um, we so we played around with that, and 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 we got introduced to Singularity University, and then to Open Exo. And um, when we were going, then we so so I had a couple of partners. We were working on Open Exo and started consulting and coaching and things like that. And one thing I noticed when talking with with people and with my experience with the human brain, it is people don't like to be told that what they're doing that's successful right now is going to be their demise. Um, right. You know, and so then I really thought, well, if we could use the, the idea of the sci-fi hive to get people to redefine a different future. And we were doing it in like local organizations and um, but they're very small it was kind of very small at that point and then COVID happened and we had the opportunity at the first open exo global conference to run a global sci-fi hive and we did it on five different topics and so i transformed it from an in-person thing to an online thing um like really all overnight <laughs> and wow, very cool. what happened at that conference was amazing though um because it was the first time we had like people from all over the world in one room talking about a topic and so, you know, that was the key, getting these massively diverse groups together to really talk about topics and getting experts on a subject and non-experts together. And, you know, we even had rooms in, in some of our sci-fi highs where we had like 12-year-olds and 70-year-olds together. And the ideas that they come up with in these diverse groups are, are way more than we've ever seen before. And the process and the journey of it is so engaging that the teams end up connecting and staying connected and, and talking about how can they make these things real. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just incredibly engaging and fun to be part of this and part of a sci-fi hive. And, and, you know, and that just engages humans. We like to have fun. Um, we like to collaborate. And, you know, as long as you go in with an open mind, we break down your barriers and you can really collaborate with these diverse people from all over the world 
and come up with just amazing new ideas. And let awesome. First of all, I just love the idea of people from all over the place co-creating and co-collaborating and and you know one person says something and it stimulates your idea and you, you know we've all experienced this where it's like oh that opened up this and suddenly your brain is just like spinning off in all kinds of ideas and i i you know imagination playground antics all of those things you i mean you yeah. said the essence of play is is a lot of it mm -hmm. um and but you know and and we get stuck in our own little bubbles sometimes and forget that there's a whole entire world out there. And it doesn't mean that we have to necessarily, you know, be global or move or relocate. It, it can be, but it can also be just about harnessing and leveraging all of those assets of these minds and, and ideas and, and experiences and actual real case studies of what's happened in the world that you can bring back and implement in your own community. I think that's exactly yeah. kind of the essence of where we're getting at. Now, the sci-fi hive on, I mean, I'm, you know, getting more familiar with the process. So we're going to talk about that. But at a highest level, I, I, I'm going to talk about the sprint process. Mm -hmm. Right. And on the sci fi hive, you know, I'm just going to say the six sort of categories um, that I'm reading. Or if you want, actually, if you want to tell us kind of what you see as the sprint process uh, and what people, you know, what people experience in a, in a sprint as mm -hmm. far as, you know, using this as a tool to reimagine their future. Yeah. So, so in the, in the exo sprint, um, there's the, really the two components at the beginning, which is an awake, which is what we talked about earlier. It's like this, all this bad stuff's going to happen if you don't awaken to, to the right. future. And then the explore where they're, you know, you get people to explore possibilities. And that's really where the sci-fi hive lives okay. is in um, taking a more utopian view to that awakening. Although we do, it was as part of the kickoff, we do go through to that awakening and, and just really kind of talk about how things are growing exponentially and changing exponentially. Um, but then we take this utopian view of defining the future you want. Um, and so one of the components inside of the sci-fi hive is exploration, where we get everybody to explore and that happens actually for a whole week that they're exploring and you know they explore contextual changes and global challenges and technology advancement and a whole bunch of things to really get them thinking outside of their box because the more experienced you get the actually more refined your thinking gets and then and, and then it's harder for you to actually think outside your box and so that's why we mix non-experts with experts and we bring in experts from adjacent industries or, you know, just random technology experts that may be related to that field and just to get people thinking differently. And then all through the sci-fi hive process, you know, if we have a hundred people in a sci-fi hive, we'll split them into smaller teams and they collaborate in smaller teams, maybe eight people on a team. And then between each section of, of exploring and writing a future story, we bring them all back together and they share some components of what they've learned. And so we cross collaborate amongst all the teams. And, and then as a facilitator, we jump around from room to room and we help expand thinking and, and just throw in tidbits, right? So we don't tell them their stories. They need to write their own story but we help to expand their thinking and say, you know, did you think about this technology and how you could use that? Or did you right. think about, about this asset mm -hmm. that you have and how you could use it differently? And all those components of the, the EXO model, we try to get them thinking about how do they use those uh, in their future vision. And then uh, at the end, you know, we'll, we'll, sometimes we create a professional comic book if the organization wants it, or they can just use their digital prototype that they created during the process. So they actually end up with a, a prototype of a comic book through the, the sci-fi hive. Uh, and out of that, you pull initiatives. So there are, uh, you know, we really look at, it's a 20 year out vision, but we look at what can you do, you know, right now to get to that vision? What initiative can you start today that will get you to that 20 year vision? And our hope is to get to a 20 year vision in a quarter of the time. Running a new business can be stressful. The last thing you need is to worry about unexpected accidents or lawsuits. 
Don't overlook the importance of liability insurance. It's a critical investment in the success of your business. Protect yourself, your assets, and your reputation by securing the liability coverage you need. Take the first step in safeguarding your business. Today, go to zensurance.com forward slash save 35 for a free business insurance quote. Get the low cost insurance protection you need from Canada's small business insurance experts. Yeah, and if you and if you get, you know, a whole bunch of people aligned on creating the same story, they're all gonna make their own little contributions towards it. And you know, no, it's almost like operating as a as a organization or as a company, but you're actually, you know, creating a future as opposed to running a company, I, as I yeah. kind of see it. Um, one thing that has completely intrigued me is quite often the ideas of sprints or, you know, jamming. And it is, you know, people think of this as related to technology. But in the case of the sci-fi hive, if we can talk a little bit about some of the case studies, like you've worked with a municipal government, right, to talk mm -hmm. about the future of their community You've um, talked about, you know, healthcare and brought people together. Can you just talk about a few of the uh, sci-fi hubs that you've run in the future and why, what was, what was common amongst the people and, you know, to make them want to engage in innovation process to create a new future? And I'm, let's just talk about a little flag staff, Alberta, this, yeah. this, community in Canada, right? That uh, yeah. is quite progressive. Maybe start there and then we'll we'll delve into a couple more case studies. Yeah, so Flagstaff uh, did a citizen engagement uh, to define their future and really come up with some initiatives to do some collaborative work amongst the community. <laughs> so they had uh, almost 100 people get involved at the start and you know we had some people drop off, but the people that were really excited about it, stayed involved right to the end. And uh, they made, I believe there was five stories of the future um, that their community wanted. And so a big kind of focus they ended up looking at, and this, you know, this was post, well, mid COVID, let's say, right. is really looking at, um, you know, with the change to hybrid work or work from home, how can they attract people out to a rural community and provide the same kind of, of um, you know, um, amenities that a city has? And so they came up with a bunch of initiatives, you know, some vertical farming, um, uh, or what they were calling Ruber, which is a rural Uber, um, cool. and things like that. Yeah, so lots of things like that. But what it did is um, they, they said they've never got that many people that engaged so quickly in in uh, a citizen engagement especially in a rural environment where people are kind of all over the place um and spread out so flagstaff is quite a large county it has you know um i think there's 10 towns in within the county and so they were able to engage that really broad community and we had everything from you know the farmers to the people living in the towns the counselors and everybody involved economic development was involved and so we got this range of, of people from the next generation of farmers who who really want to farm differently and the the past generation of farmers who are very traditional working together and talking about what the future could be and so that just changes the conversation they start to understand each other's perspectives and and working together towards a different future and and you know, it's it's just amazing what happens in these sessions. And these really tight groups get formed, and they want to take their story. They they own their story, and they want to make that real. And so, some groups formed off of that to work on some of those projects. So it's pretty amazing what happens in these these sessions, and and many cases the little the little small hive rooms that we make. They all share contact information, and they're still keeping in touch a lot in a lot of cases. I just want to talk a little bit about this, and I'm not sure what the answer is. So, and I'm not sure if we're going to be able to come up with the answer, but I've been involved in sort of community imagination processes before community, like I, you know, imagine Nanaimo, for instance, or, you know, and, and um, communities that say, let's build our 
say 15 year plan, right? Yeah. What do we get? What do we? It, and I, I, I'm not going, they're great to a certain degree, right? They, they follow a process. We usually sit in a conference center or we come out to these, you know, community events yeah. and it, we share our ideas and what pops out is a, you know, a structured sort of plan um, that is Nobody very reads. linear, very <laughs> linear, right? We yeah. are going to increase this by 5% or we are going to, you know, make five more trails of the trail system. You know, whatever, it seems yeah. very, a little bit more of the same. Yeah. What is the magic behind you know, an exponential sprint that, and what results are different than say a more traditional, you know, reimagining yeah. process? Yeah. Well, the problem is with those, those other plans is they are very linear and, and brutally honest, they're boring. Right. And you know can you imagine you're reading reading a sentence saying we're going to increase the walking pass by five percent? Can you imagine yourself on that path? No, right. you can't, right? And that's where the sci-fi hive comes in. And and we, we I say we work backwards, right? So what we do is, well, what's the vision? What do you want that future? And so maybe they're creating this story of uh, their grandchildren walking down a path with the grandparents. And, you know, there's, you know, um, little robots driving around with snack foods or whatever, right? So they envision this future and, and they see themselves in that future. And when we bring this diverse group of people together, generally the comic has a very diverse audience. The result of the sci-fi hive is a comic book. Right. And, and reading comics, and there's a, there's a magic in reading a comic book in that it returns you back um, to your childhood. It creates uh, believers in that future. And so comics suspend disbelief in its readers. So it's not just the people that create the comic. It's whoever reads the comic that become mm. believers in that future. And, you know... It, you can give me a planning report and give me a comic. And for most people, <laughs> you know, I might get through a couple pages and start skimming through the planning report, but I will read the whole comic book. And that's where the magic is, right? It, it's actually, it's a good marketing tool um, because it creates believers in your future. I love it. I yeah. love it. And I'm going to expand that a little bit by using three words that are the essence of those believers, right? Is they they have to see themselves in the experience. So yeah. experience, there has to be a level of growth, right? Personal growth, maybe pushing a little bit of boundaries, getting out of our comfort zone um, to go, oh, if I, if I contribute a little bit, that could happen. So growth. And the third is contribution, of course, whether it's in your career or how you show up in the world or... Um, you know, your, your charity work that you do, if you can see a way to contribute to that future, no matter how small or how big, I think, you know, you're, you're in it, you're, you're engaged, you're, you're connected to that, you know, yeah. purpose and, and result. Well, and that, and that's why we use the sci-fi or the sci-fi hive methodology uses a hero's journey story format which is the most common story format. It's like every movie and book that, that has it. But but the end of a hero's journey story after you've gone through all the trials and tribulations to get to your future is learning, right? right. And so that is part of the story is, is learning. And, and all the naysayers that read the story will actually see their nays in there, right? Because they'll see some of the barriers, but how can you possibly come overcome those barriers is part of that journey. And so... You're, you're doing the change management, the people change management as part of developing right. this story, right? Wow. And, and so that, that's what, and, and we use, do really, really big groups. Like normally if you're going to develop your vision for your organization, you'll bring in some experts and you'll get a few leaders in a room and you'll create this vision. No, we want people from all over the organization, from frontline to executives mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. together on the vision. So we bring a hundred or 200 people into it. And in the end, the organization believes in this future because they built it for themselves. Right. Yeah. Well, and I, 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 and I mean, 
I just picked on Flagstaff because I would love to see a future where every single location, right? Every municipality, whether it's a municipality, maybe even a region, is it, it has ditched the old way of defining themselves as a geography. And yes. they've now moved to defining themselves at, as a purpose-driven location, right? A purpose-driven place. And I just imagine, you know, if if we start living and being and showing up in places where, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if Flagstaff got quite to that level, but in a community where their vision is to, you know, promote longevity or their vision is to disrupt you know, healthcare in a way. Um, so, you know, that's my personal mission, which is why I picked yes. But can you just, can can you talk a, about one more case study, let's say, yeah. of what you found really inspiring? Yeah, I think probably the, the most, well, there's two. I mean, the global sci-fi hives are always inspiring. So we did one on healthcare and I'll, I'll just talk really quickly about that because that had people from 18 countries involved um, almost 100 people looking at the future of healthcare, and a couple of initiatives were kicked off uh, around that. Um, and you can see the result in Paul McConnor, sci-fi.com. But um, I, I really like that because of the such broad audience that was involved. But probably the best story I have is out of Fraport in Bulgaria. So that's the airports in Bulgaria. Okay. And they brought people from all over the the um, tourism industry, people from the neighboring countries, from all over the airport organization. Uh, there was uh, 135 people involved in total um, to envision new futures. So they ended up with 14 different comic strips uh, related to that. Um, but the t one of the testimonials we got was from um, one of the leaders who said, you know, we've been, we've, we lived under communist rule for a very, very long time. And people were afraid to share their stories, mm. or sh afraid to share their ideas. And like overnight with the sci-fi hive, the next day, there was just a buzz in the airport of ideas and everybody was collaborating and talking about the sci-fi hive and the stories. And if you go to the airports the, uh, in Bulgaria now, the comic book is in poster size hanging on the walls and they kicked off a whole bunch of sprints uh, related to the sci-fi hive. But just the way it changed the culture overnight wow. of the whole organization overnight, the entire culture changed. And um, it was it was amazing what happened. And, you know, they brought me in on some some parties that they had uh, via video and stuff. And um, they really rallied around those sci fi hives and they're changing their organization. I'm getting chills just sort yeah. of thinking about the impact that's happening, right? Yeah. In, in that kind of environment. So let let's. I mean, I definitely encourage anybody to go to Sci-Fi Hive. Check out the the website. Um, and uh, but I, I want to lead lead you into what's the next step, right? What's the next path? And something that we both share in in common is, and when I asked you if you could wave a magic wand and create. The next hive, you know, what would it be? And we talked about the possibility of uh, urban food futures. Can you just tell me a little bit about that? And what would it look like for somebody to get involved with you or, or work with you going forward, Ken? Yeah, so I know we've been talking about uh, doing a uh, global sci-fi hive. So post-COVID, um, many municipalities now have this big downtown core that's sitting, you know, uh, 25 to 50% empty. Um, and so I've been I've been thinking about for a while, how do we get these municipalities to start rethinking? Because a lot of them are now focused on, well, how do we get back to where we were? Well, yes, right. They, they have to think differently about how do we get to where we want to be instead. And and then if we we look at some of the problems we have with food sourcing and, and the supply chain and we have these empty towers. Well, what can we do with an empty tower and look at urban food sourcing and, and mixing that with empty real estate? So, you know, I, I don't want to throw too many ideas because that's the whole point of the sci-fi hypes to get a bunch of people together and get them talking about how mm -hmm. do we overcome these problems and, and what do we want that future to look like? Um, and so we also unveiled the, the Sci-Fi Hive platform the other day, which allows anybody to run their own Sci-Fi Hive. And we have 
training for beekeepers, which is what we call the head facilitator. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, available. And um, so it, it's really, you know, I, I myself can run enough sci fi hives to meet my massive transformational purpose and inspire enough imaginations to change the world. So we have a platform now so people can run their own sci fi hives. And, okay. um, and so, you know, together we do a, a sci fi hive, a global one, where we'll invite people from around the globe. Uh, to come and participate in a sci-fi hive and you know we're hoping we'll get we'll get some municipalities involved some municipal leaders hopefully and and get as well some experts in future of food involved and uh, just citizens involved that really want to look at a new way of living and I think especially in these northern climates where we are where I am anyways uh, our winter food supply of fresh produce is not very good usually. Right. And, um, and, and if you take this even further and look at very Northern climates and Nunavut and things like that, mm-hmm. um, I know it's a big problem for them to, to get produce and to get, you know, good food there. Um, but with technology now, there's no reason that Absolutely. we can't all be growing our food locally and, um, and, and taking care of this problem and, you know, not only that, if you look at environment, if we're not, you know, driving food all over the globe and we're all growing our food locally, well, that's a huge impact as well to climate, positive impact, right? Well, and I love, I, I mean, we could go on, it's a whole nother yeah, podcast. I, to talk I could about talk the, for hours. No, we could talk about that for hours. <laughs> Honestly, it's fantastic. Yeah. So I want to just bring it back to say, Please connect with Ken. This is not just a, a an idea. Ken is, and we started with inspiring imaginations that will change the world. I know Ken is sort of driving the change and inspiring imaginations that are changing the world. And I know you want to be a part of it. Let's be a part of it. There is the, you know, we talked about the one coming up on, on maybe securing food futures. Uh, if you follow, you know, myself or Ken, you'll find out more about that. Uh, but I encourage you to sort of look at the idea of running a sprint for yourself, for your organization, for your vision, and, you know, and why these, you know, exponential sprints and this, um, you know, unleashing your imagination is is a fantastic process to change culture and t- teach ideas and do things differently. Ken, is there anything you'd like to add? No, just uh, go to scifihive.com and check it out. And um I hope to see you all in a sci-fi hive soon. Sounds awesome. Ken, very, was such a pleasure having you here on Canada's podcast. And just for fun, related to our urban futures, there is another podcast that I've hosted with uh, the Sea to Sky Farms, where we talk about vertical farming and urban farming, but we also talk about, you know, going from, you know, the idea of maybe a 10% reducing imports of lettuce to, you know what? Heck, let's go big. Let's go 50% food security in in Canada within, you know, 10 years. It's doable. So it just, we're inspiring you to think big and uh, hopefully we will see you again and engage with you in the future. Thanks, Angela.